Welcome to the webinar on building a next-gen API platform with the all-new Corio Connect. I am Pubudu Gunatilaka. I am a senior technical lead at WSO2. Today I have Praminda Jayavadana. He is a technical lead at WSO2. Here is the agenda for today's webinar. So we'll look into a sample use case and then we'll look at Corio Connect architecture and deployment modes and we'll go through some feature overview, and then uh, we'll discuss about the roadmap, and then Praminda will be doing a demo on Corio Connect, and we have some uh, Q&A session as well. Let's uh, take a taxi company. So I think you are all familiar with the Uber, Grab, and those kind of a taxi companies. So the key features in these are, like you have a ride app, you have a taxi driver app, and then you have some business inside dashboards that are basically internal dashboards that you can get some business insights. And addition to that, you have some internal sales, finance, and admin apps. So if you look at the requirements, uh, we have maybe developed set of microservices then you want to expose these microservices as apps, so as APIs for the apps can uh, basically uh, invoke can do their job. So when it's come to the APIs, we have public and private APIs, and we may need to do custom validations, and we may have to do some different security enforcements. In yes, some cases, there can be JWT-based API security authentication and some cases it could be MTLS between server to server communication and so on. And there can be cases we want to do API shaping and for to optimize the bandwidth for web application versus mobile. And we need to have resiliency and auto scaling to make sure the system is up and running every time and to achieve the peak time uh, load as well. So these are the set of requirements that we need to achieve. So let's look at how we can build this solution. So before I go to the solution, I'll need to explain the control plane concept here. The control plane is where the API creation, API management and key generation takes place. So this contains several portals such as publisher, dev portal, admin portals, basically in the publisher that's where you come and create uh, apis and in the developer portal that's where the, basically the app developers discover apis and subscribe to those apis and so on in the admin portal you have date limiting policies you do different admin level tasks there so these are the basically tasks that is uh, done in the control plane Moving on, uh, there is another plane called data plane. So the data plane is where the created APIs are exposed to public private consumers so that they, they can basically knock. So these capabilities basically do some security enforcement, rate limiting, uh, publishing analytics, and so on. So this data plane basically consists of microservices, legacy, legacy services and other components in the uh, basically whatever the services that are need to be in the data plane. So this is the whole set of what we call the data plane. Now, if you look at the solution here, so I'm explaining a decentralized architecture with MSC and decentralized API management. So if you look at the uh, picture from the top, you can find the control plane there. So as I mentioned earlier, you have the publisher, dev portal, admin portals in the control plane. That's where the basically publishers and app developers interact. And then coming back to the data plane, if I start from um, the bottom, you can see the uh, taxi microservices, track microservices, and payment alert microservices. In this case, what we have done is we have grouped set of microservices and exposed these microservices from the uh, API gateway. 
So to achieve HJ, we have two similar API gateways in the bottom. And the other set of microservices that are basically internal uh, APIs that we need to expose, such as sales, finance, payment, admin. So these set of microservices again grouped and exposed via the API gateway. So these two API gateways are basically two different set of API gateway deployments. We have basically decentralized central API gateway in here. So with this, we provide the uh, single exposure to the same set of uh, API and basically we can manage and do whatever the maintenance in a set of APIs without affecting the entire API deployment. So that's the benefit of it. And uh, this is basically inherited with the MSA architecture and that's how it is being done. So with the, for traffic management, we have the traffic manager here that will basically test the traffic management to all the APIs. Okay, so moving on to the decentralized to centralized uh, um, API management, the key difference here is that you can see the same set of API gateways, but the difference is that uh, all the APIs are being deployed in the all the APIs. If you take any API gateway at a given time, all the APIs are there. So whatever the change you do uh, in from the control plane, those are available in all the API gateways. So this is basically centrally managed. So there can be cases we need to apply centralized architecture to achieve a set of use cases. Now, the key difference as uh, centralized architecture to decentralized architecture is that we have decentralized and easily manageable different different gateway components in the in those architectures we can basically manage those separately and it won't affect the entire api consumers basically we can change the api consumer behavior one at a time and the other architecture we can discuss here is the hybrid architecture in a hybrid architecture what will happen is in in cloud uh, you have the control plane and the data plane can be in on-premise or you can can be running your data center and so on. Basic idea is data plane will connect to the cloud control plane and it will basically uh, get the APIs that have you created in the control plane. So the traffic directly come to the on-premise data plane and you can basically monitor everything from the centralized uh, control plane in the cloud. So that's about the hybrid architecture. And let's move on to our uh, main focus today, that is the Corio Connect. So Corio Connect has uh, three components, basically, adapter, router, and the enforcer. I'll start with the router. Router is the Onnoy proxy. So Onnoy proxy is an open source project that is uh, heavily uh, used in today's technology with service measures and all. So with the Onnoy proxy, what we have done is we have different set of custom filters. We have some WASM filters, and then we have plugged those to Onnoy proxy and expose it as a, the router. So it's the basically that's the entry point for your API request. And when the request comes to the router, it will route the request to the enforcer. Enforcer is the policy engine or the policy uh, enforcement uh, platform. So when the request comes, it will check the, check the JWT authentication, authorization, rate limiting, and pushing analytics and so on. So that's the basic task of the enforcer. So the enforcer is written in Java and uh, moving back to the adapter, that is the third component. So the adapter is the control plane for the router and the enforcer. So when you create APIs, you basically need to have the open API definition and some metadata files 
like API YAML and so on. So these projects are coming to the adapter and adapter will convert those projects in a way that router can understand, in a way Enforcer can understand. So in the router, basically the onnoi proxy, basically it has the con config dumb onnoi config recall. So we, the adapter basically convert that API project in, into a config dump where the basically uh, it has some clusters routes that are basically terms that are using the onnoi proxy and coming back to the onno uh, enforcer enforcer will have the same set of data that is related for uh, jw2 validation or rate limiting and so on so that's how basically the three components each other work and this uh, adapter to router communication and adapter to enforce communication is done via the XDS protocol. Underline it uses the gRPC communication. So if you look at the key features here, so the main idea behind the Corio Connect micro gateway is uh, basically we want to have a lightweight version of API gateway design specific for microservices architecture and cloud native friendly. And it, it is designed to scale one second startup time, self-validating tokens, and it support uh, both mutable and immutable gateways. And uh, we can deploy small scale APIs to large scale API deployment. Basically you can go up to thousands of APIs. So that's the key features of the Call you connect and let's move on to the uh, deploying call you connect in kubernetes so if you come to the kubernetes um, um, technology you have different uh, namespaces here so we have used a single namespace called api namespace here and in to deploy call connect adapter we have the adapter deployment here and the service is there and normally to achieve HA we deploy two replicas and if you look at the adapter pod here it contains single adapter container so the container of the adapter runs in the adapter pod and if you compare this with the gateway runtime deployment that is the enforcer and router you can see the same pod contains the router and enforcer. Um, basically, it runs in the same pod. So the key idea here is that it shares the same network namespace there. So it, router to enforcer call happens via the local host. So it gives us, uh, it basically reduces the network latency that will add to the API request. By doing that, you can basically scale these pods. So when you scale the gateway runtime deployment, it will scale the router and enforce and so on. So those are scaling at in parallel. So that's the again a key advantage here. Uh, as the adapter is the control plane, we don't basically uh, recommend to like scaling the adapter. There is no real requirement on that. But you can scale the uh, gateway runtime deployment to achieve any TPS values that is uh, you need to achieve. And then uh, you can use horizontal pod auto scaling policies. So these policies can be based on CPU memory and so on. Okay, moving on to the deployment modes of Corio Connect. So we have two deployment modes here. So the Corio Connect uh, can work with the WSO2 API manager as the control plane. So the control plane will be the API manager and data plane will be Corio Connect. So whenever you create an API from the API manager, it will come to the data plane and instantly gets deployed in the data plane. You can use the API CTL command line tool to interact with the API manager and you don't need to interact with the Corio Connect in this case. So uh, whatever the uh, instructions you make 
in the control plane it will be appear in the data plane so you may be subscribing to apis those subscription data will be available in the data plane and so on the next uh, deployment mode is the standalone gateway in this case you don't have a control plane but still you have the data uh, data plane that is the core you connect in in this case we call it as an immutable gateway approach where you can basically um, deploy the gateway in an immutable way basically you have to burn every uh, api projects that you have and then adapter will boot up and adapter will basically pass those api information to the router and enforcer so that's basically what will happen in the standalone gateway and you can use the api ctl to interact with the adapter if you need to do uh, auto update the uh, gateway deployment still you can use the api ctl and interact with the adapter and update the api and so on okay moving on uh, so here is how the courier connect uh, connects with the wso2 api manager as the control plane if i start from the top the control plane we have the api manager control plane so when you create an api so the a control pin plane will basically sending a jms message to the data plane so the adapter has basically subscribed to the control plane so when the adapter gets the jms message it will pull the api artifact and once and once the adapter gets the artifact, it will distribute those API artifacts between router and uh, enforcer. So basically, the, all these uh, components are getting those uh, API artifact updates. And you, when you subscribe, the subscription JMS message is coming to the adapter. It contains whatever the required necessary information. So this uh, basically adapter will forward that uh, information to the enforcer. So basically with that enforcer will be able to uh, do the subscription validation in in an api request so coming back to the uh, data plane so in the enforcer basically it does uh, policy enforcement to api request while it uh, publishes analytics to the courier platform so this analytics we have specified here it should be the Courier analytics uh, that we run in cloud and enforce also publishing uh, rate limiting information to traffic manager and so on so basically it will publish those rate limiting traffic manager and traffic manager will evaluate and send the, another jms message with the decision whether to throttle out or not and then the enforcer will basically um, do the rate limiting there so this happens in asynchronous mode so this is uh, who are familiar with api manager platform basically we have the async mode uh, uh, with the traffic manager for rate limiting okay so moving on um, let's look at the features of core connect so um, api manager can be used as the control plane. You can create APIs, you can create WebSocket APIs, you can add key managers, you can subscribe to APIs and all those information will be coming to the data plane. So that's the main task, what will happen with that. And you can apply API security, you can do the JWT based uh, security or you can, you can customize to support any um authentication mechanism you want likewise and you can apply rate limiting to api level application level and subscription based uh, level uh, rate limiting and you can do the mediation and message transformation i will explain this in another slide and we support service discovery with the uh, console and we have the service mesh integration as an hk twin with the Istio, and we have routing capabilities with dynamic static routing capabilities, and uh, we can do failover, load balancing, and those capabilities are there when you want to do 
uh, in point based routing and we have api insights and observability that we have a choreo choreo analytics and uh, coming back to the observability we have the tracing capabilities that we can do with the uh, uh, jaga shipping and asia app insights and we also have some set of troubleshooting and configurations that can basically uh, highlight the entire what you can done with Corio Connect. So you can find the complete feature list in uh, here. You can go to this link and you will get the complete supported feature list in Corio Connect 1.0. Okay, so coming back to the API request flow. So uh, this is the basic request flow uh, when you send an request to the router. So the request will come to the router and the router will do a check call to the enforcer. This is a gRPC call. And normally if you deploy this in Kubernetes, this is a, just a local host call. Now the request comes to the enforcer. Enforcer will do the JWT validation, API subscription validation and so on. And it will do the rate limiting and um, analytics will be publishing in asynchronous mode uh, that I will explain in later. Now, the once the enforcement is done, it will come to the router again. And then in this case, um, uh, enforcer decide whether the request can proceed further or not. If it is failing, uh, it will go to the client. Otherwise, it will route to the backend service. Once it returns from the backend service, it will get the relevant uh, uh, requested uh, resource and coming back to the API consumer. So that's the basic flow. What will happen to a request? And router will be publishing some uh, data, uh, some metadata that uh, basically sends to the enforcer. So enforcer use those metadata related to the APIs and create the analytics information. And those analytics information will be published into the Corio uh, analytics. So that's how uh, it's been done. And moving on, uh, this is the flow when you do an API request with uh, mediation and message transformation. So uh, if I start from the beginning, the API consumer will do the send the API request. It will come to the router and it will go to the enforcer where enforcer will do the JWT validation and so on. And once that is done, it will come to the router again. Now, in this case, router will check whether you have added an interceptor uh, to do some payload modification and so on. And if you have done it, it will call the interceptor service that you have given here. So the basic idea here is that the Corio Connect does not support uh, doing the mediation within the the gateway itself, but uh, you can develop a microservice. So basically we provide an open space, open API specification for you to develop an interceptor service. So using that, you can develop an interceptor service. So here you can do the payload modification, adding headers and so on. So what will happen is when the request come from router to interceptor service, you do some modification and the request comes back to the router again and it will send to the backend. So the backend will send some response here and maybe you want to do some another modification to the payload before you need to send to the consumer. In this case, you can call the interceptor service again to do some modification to the response body. So interceptor service will do some modification there and return. And then finally it will go to the API consumer. So this is how the flow works. So Onno is an asynchronous and non-blocking and working in an unblocking behavior. So we have utilized that 
and we have a Lua filter here, which basically will be calling these interceptor service. When you have injected interceptors in request path as well as in the response path. So you can write the interceptor service in different languages. Uh, so the language just doesn't matter, but we have samples in Ballerina, Java, Golang and Node.js. You can use those samples and get started with it. So this is how the mediation and message transformation is happening in Corio Connect. Moving on, uh, the next feature is the custom filter support. So uh, when you when the request comes to the enforcer, we do the rate limiting, we do the authentication, and these uh, things are done using the custom filters, basing the filters that we have developed. So we have authentication filter, throttle filter, and those are the main filters we have. But in addition to these filters, you can write your own filter. Maybe you want to do some custom modification, custom authentication, likewise. So you can use these custom filters and you can check apart from the JWT validation, you can check for some header and you can validate the request and so on. So those can be done in that way. So at the moment, we only support the request path and filters can be written in Java. Basically the enforcer is written in Java. So you have to write the extension in Java. So here's the interface for that. You can see the handle request here. So with that, you can do any custom validation or do whatever the modification there. Basically, the custom filters are useful in a way for validation and to make sure you do some extra authentication and so on. Okay, moving on to immutable API micro gateway. So why basically we need immutable API gateway? So, so this is useful in device embedded systems such as retail stores, automotive systems, and so on. In here, what you will do is you create an API project or you create the API and you can commit to that project to JIT. Maybe you create five APIs, then you can commit to the JIT and JIT will trigger the Jenkins pipeline. And the pipeline basically use the adapter Docker image, adapter based Docker image and get those API projects and burn those API projects into the adapter Docker image and create a new Docker image. And it will push those to the uh, doc container registry. Once the new Docker image in the container registry, it will be, you can use Spinnaker or some other way. You can deploy the latest Docker image to the Kubernetes. So what will happen is all the APIs will be getting deployed in Kubernetes environment. So the likewise, you can add or modify the APIs and you can follow the same pipeline and deploy these in Kubernetes. So this is an immutable way where you have predefined everything, you test in low environment and you promote the Docker image to the upper environment. So this is uh, not like doing a hot update. This is basically uh, doing a um, predefined uh, modification that you have done. Okay, moving on. Uh, so we coming to the configuration. So in Corio Connect, also we have three components. Adapter maintains the configuration. So it has some config toml. So this has some uh, uh, set of uh, files. Basically the config toml has some sections to define each. Uh, so some section have the router configuration, some section have enforcer configuration and so on. So the idea is we, we are here using only a single configuration toml. So if you want to provide 
uh, configuration via environment variables in most cases if you want to pass um, passwords and so on then you can use this option one also we have the cc prefix where you can you convert any configuration in the config normal and export this uh, cc prefix uh, related uh, configuration and it will basically uh, apply in the adapter so these two options are available you can use any of these to apply configuration for uh, as an environment variables okay so moving to the roadmap so uh, we will be doing uh, another Corel connect release in q1 so basic idea is that uh, api manager 4.1 will be 4.1 will be released in this timeline so along with that we will be having another Corel connect release that we call as 1.1 so in that we are going to support the operation level mediation policies for apis that basically supports uh, manipulating headers rewrite resource paths add remove query parameters likewise and we will be supporting the default api version websocket support we have the websocket but we are improving the websocket to allowing band analytics and bandwidth based throttling and also we are supporting open policy hn and we are going to support prototype api mock implementation and we will be having JIT integration uh, with Corio connect basic idea is you can provide a JIT uh, url to the adapter and adapter will pull those uh, api artifacts in the JIT repo and deploy to the gateways so that's basically what will happen so these are the set of features we'll be covering in q1 and beyond q1 we have uh, grpc apis graphql apis and we have the introspect with third party key managers api product support sc support web sub support and we will be doing this your service integration support that is v2 and uh, MTL support uh, with client to gate and AWS Lambda function support, Prometheus support, and ETCD support, uh, basic service discovery support. So these are coming beyond Q1. Yeah, so this is what will be happening after Q1. And I think we have come to the demo. I'll hand over to Praminda to continue with the demo. Praminda, over to you. Hello everyone, I'm Praminda Jayavardhana. So I will be doing a small demo on uh, Corio Connect 100. So let's start. So here we have the uh, Corio Connect distribution. Uh, so it's a small distribution, few kilobytes. Uh, let's first do, look at what the contents of the distribution. <clears throat> so let's go in the distribution. So inside the distribution, you have a, a set of Docker Compose files, Kubernetes artifacts. These are license, readme, and uh, we don't need to look, it, look at these files now. So let's go into the Docker Compose section. So in here, you have uh, Corio Connect and Corio Connect with APM, two Docker, two set of Docker Compose files and some resources. So I'm going to, uh, in my demo, I'm going to walk you through and set up of uh, Corio Connect with APM. So first, uh, before describing what these are, let's uh, first uh, start uh, this distribution because it, that will take a small amount of time to start up with APM. While it is starting up, let's uh, look at the distribution again. So here we have uh, Corio Connect with APM Docker file, Docker Compose file. And then uh, in the conf directory, we have 
uh, we have the specific configurations <coughs> that applies to Corio Connect with APM deployment. Uh, this uh, this config toml is the main configuration file of uh, Corio Connect, and this is uh, this config toml uh, template is uh, the file which contains all the supported uh, configurations by Corio Connect. It doesn't uh, have any value in the runtime itself, but you can just uh, refer it to know what are the available all available configurations uh, for Corio Connect, uh, just for the reference. And this is the API managers deployment toml file, and this is the log config toml uh, is the configuration uh, log configuration file for adapter, and log4j dot property file is the log uh, configuration file for uh, enforcer. <clears throat> So if we look at the configurations here, uh, so here we have a uh, uh, set of configurations specific to is specific for adapter and router and enforcer. So with this deployment mode, with the API manager deployment mode, we have the control plane section enabled enable true and we are pointing at the local uh, docker compose files docker compose api manager set so that's uh Korea connect with apm uh, deployment docker compose and uh, here we have the Korea connect just Korea connect uh, that is the standalone mode Korea connect deployment so in here you only have uh, uh adapter router and enforcer nodes you don't have api manager here so if you look at here you have router adapter and the enforcer so it's uh, the configuration section is same as before it doesn't have the deployment toml file which is the api managers configuration file here that's the only difference uh, and the uh, control plane section is disabled it doesn't uh, by default it is disabled so we don't have this uh, con control plane section here that means it's not uh, enabled so yeah so here we have some resources uh, uh, in the docker compose uh, deployment resources so first if we look at the adapters resources section you have uh, artifacts and security uh, directories. In security directories, you have the key stores and trust store uh, files. Basically, you can put your trust, uh, trusted certificates and your, uh, you can change your default uh, key store with, by changing these files. And here, uh, we have artifacts directory. This is where you have to put your uh, API zip files when you're going with the immutable uh, standalone de immutable deployment. Uh, for Enforcer, you have, again, you have same security uh, resources, key store and trust store uh, configurations. And here you have the drop-in section. Uh, this is for, uh, this is, for some specific features such as uh, JWT transformers, you can implement your own JWT transformers and put that jar file in here. Uh, that's how you make it available to the enforcer uh, content. And in here, uh, in the router uh, resources also, you have security. Uh, again, that's key store and trust store configurations. So going back, uh, to the top of the distribution uh, after docker compose you have kubernetes your kubernetes artifacts uh, again here also you have uh, two set of artifacts for the two set of deployments the standalone one uh, like this and uh, uh, Corio connect with apm uh, kubernetes artifacts like this now let's uh, look at the demo. So we have our uh, uh, Corio Connect with APM deployment started. Let me go to the publisher now. So here, what we are going to do is simply uh, deploy an API from uh, API publisher. And then I'm going to go to the de developer portal 
and subscribe and invoke it via the uh, Corio Connect gate. So let's uh, deploy sample uh, simple uh, pet store API here. I have my API definition. Deploying it, I'm going to do unlimited business plan. And now I'm going to deploy that into our uh, Corio Connect gateway. It's available on port uh, 9095. Okay, the deployment is done. Now I'm going to publish the API. So the API is now published and then I'm going to go to the developer portal to use the API. Here we have our API. So in the API list, we have our new API. Now I'm going to subscribe this API to my default application here. And I'm going to generate my production keys. and generate access token. So I'll copy this token and let's try out the API. Yeah, I have my token. Looks like we got the correct response. So it's going uh, to our gateway, uh, Corio Connect gateway uh, endpoint. And via that, it's going to call the actual pet store API. Yeah, so that's the, uh, the that's, that's a basic demo of how you can uh, deploy an API and invoke uh, expose that by uh, expose that by the gateway and invoke it. Uh, so now let's look at uh, so our uh, repository structure. So if you if you are an open source user and if you would like to contribute to the product, then this is our uh, open source repository WS2 Product Micro Gateway. So we are doing our development on the main branch and we have a set of modules here. So Maven is the uh, build tool we are using. So first we have the adapter component. So in here, adapter is a Go component. In here you have the adapters uh, source files. So you can just browse through the source code and this is just a normal uh, Go source repository, you can understand it. And here, uh, the, this, here, this is the module where we are building the choreogonic distribution, which we just uh, walked through. And this is the enforcers modules, module. So we have some common uh, Maven module for enforcers common uh, stuff and then actual M enforcer source code. So this is a Java uh, module again. So you can go inside then take a look. And then uh, for uh, for Envoy, we have some custom filters and that implementation is there uh, in here. Uh, and this is the routers. Uh, definition. So here we are building a custom uh, or no image basically. Yeah, so that's it uh, about the introduction to uh, the source code. So other than that, I will just uh, quickly show you an uh, uh, way to debug some troubleshooting steps you can take. So uh, let me show you uh how you can take uh, for example let me show you how you can take uh, memory dumps from your adapter node
so first of all we are enabling uh, we have enabled the uh, normal go uh, memory debugging uh, pprof endpoints with adapter those are only available uh, uh, to local host so first of all you have to log in to the adapter node and inside the adapter node now so this is the endpoint where you, where you have to talk to get the uh, heap dump of adapter so it's connected to this uh, connecting to this endpoint uh, in, inside the adapter and taking the heap heap dump out to the heap dot out file uh, now you have to copy that file out to your local host machine so i have copied that to my machine uh, i have my heap out here now if i open it uh, so we can use this command to open the heap out file so it will look like this so this is our when we when we shoot that command this is how the memory look like inside the adapter node <clears throat> so you can browse through this and understand if there is a memory leak it will uh, you can basically understand uh, by looking at this graph this is an a standard go tool so you can just browse through and uh, read through the documentation and understand how to work with this. so that's the demo we have uh, so we can uh, i think we have some other slide i will let pubitu to present okay thank you praminda so let's look at the next slide so we have coreo platform here so uh, coreo is a ipas solution while uh, you can focus on your business logic while the platform take care of everything by running and managing apis so you can basically try out coreo and understand how easily you can uh, create apis in coreo so uh, this is a saas solution and if you are if you want to build an api platform in on premise your data center you can use coreo connect Uh, with the wso2 api manager so with that uh, you can build your solution and if you want to try out coreo or a saas solution i'm inviting you to try coreo by using this uh, link here okay so uh, we have some frequently asked questions i'll take some questions so uh, pramind i think we can get started with it Okay, so Pubudu uh, does adapter in all in API request path. Yes, the answer is uh, no for this. So basically, when the requests are coming to the router, it will go to the enforcer, and enforcer will do the validation. And once the validations are done, the again the request will come to the router, and then router will direct to the backend. So the adapter is not being used in here. so basically the adapter is considered as the control plane for, for managing the router infos and uh, those components okay uh, next one uh, can you explain how does the control plane connect with the data plane yeah so the control plane that we consider that's where basically api creation management and policy enforcement are happening in there when you create an apis basically it pushes some jms events and the data plane that's where the adapter resides so adapter has subscribed to the jms uh, topic there so it will get those information via jms so that's how the communication happens and uh, if the adapter needs adding any additional information it uses the rest apis available in the control plane to pull any artifacts uh, as well 
Okay, so another one, uh, can we do message transformation with Korea Connect itself? Uh, the answer is no, we, we don't allow doing message transformation within the Corio gateway, but we support doing message transformation with the help of an interceptor microservice. So you can develop an interceptor microservice that, that will be a separate runtime, separate service. What uh, Corio Connect do is uh, uh, basically it, it uh, talks to the interceptor service and interceptor service to the transformation and it will return. Then the Corio Connect will route to the relevant backend or if it is the response, it will send to the client. So that's how it is being done. Okay, well, there's one other question. So this is a common one. Uh, so if I'm an uh, if I'm an already a ballerina micro gateway user, how can I migrate to Corio Connect? Yeah, it's a good question. Like uh, basically, uh, so before the Corio Connect micro gateway, we have we had the ballerina based micro gateway. So if you are using ballerina based micro gateway in your projects, uh, basically you can utilize the open API definitions and create uh, the API CTL projects. So you have to use the API CTL latest version for that. Using that, uh, you can create the API CTL project. Then you can basically deploy those projects in Corio Connect directly, or if you are using API manager, you can push those projects to API manager. So there is no straight uh, forward way to do the migration because these are two different uh, independent uh, projects. So the idea is you have to use your open API definitions and create projects as you go. Okay, so I think we have come to the end of this session and thank you very much for joining the webinar.